Hey everyone, and welcome to episode 37 of our Let's Play series for Football Manager 2016. Okay, last time around we got through the end of uh, 2017, and we're just into 2018 now. The um, the winter break is almost over, it's only 14 days to go before our next game. So what I think I'll do, we've got a couple of transfer um, happenings here and there, so what I think I'll do, I'll probably just keep running through the game and until we get to the first day of the Eredivisie season, um, and if anything sort of interesting and stuff happens between now and then, I will jump back in and show you guys. So I will see you all soon. Okay, and we're back. So it is uh, game day against Roy to JC, so the start of the Eredivisie season, or the second half, I should say. So a few little developments. Um, jump in here. So we have... Where are we? We have let Van Ryan go to Fulham for 7.5 million. Let a couple of other guys go out on loan, which is fine. Um, yeah, so we made the decision to let him go. I thought 7.5 million was a pretty good price. Um, so obviously we paid 7 for um, Daryl Yunmat. We're just finalising his contract now. Um, it looks like we're paying him at around about 100k a week. So we had a big jump in wage in terms of wage budget, but we actually did more than recover our um, our value, our transfer fee. So actually, um, you know, $500,000 extra there. So yeah, you know, there's a few weeks wages for him. So. Um, yeah, that's still, like I mentioned, that's still um, in process of happening at the moment. Did actually have, we have brought in um, Abdullah Selik. Um, he was from Utrecht. So brought him for 325k. He's a striker, 17 years old, as you can see. He's got really quite good potential. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that maybe he'll ever crack into the first team because he's not, like he's, like you can see, he, he's more of like an advanced forward slash poacher. He's not really sort of a creative player, which is what we sort of like to play, either like a, a deploying forward or a, or a complete forward. Um, we are actually going to start training him on the deploying forward, um, you know, training role or the, the position, whatever you want to call it, to actually see if maybe we can sort of, you know, shape him a little bit more. But he has got some really good stats, like, so once he develops up, he should be very, very quick. He's got brilliant finishing already, so if that actually keeps increasing, he should probably maybe have 18, 19, 20 finishing, which is going to be a bit crazy. Um, really good off the ball. Composure needs a bit of work, anticipation as well, first touch and stuff like that. Um, he could be a really, really good striker, so he's probably someone like, you know, a little bit of our... Ajax farm that will probably maybe develop up and maybe in the you know once he reaches 2021 if he's not going to hit the first team we may sell him on for a fair bit of money so that's the only person we brought in probably only other person um, that we'll bring in is Jan Matt so I'm not really interested in anybody else had a bit of a look around but like I mentioned there's not really anyone that we're interested in actually bringing into the club so yeah so what I think I'll do guys I think I'll probably run through a bunch of these games so we've got Roy to JC Heracles um, here in Veen PSV I think I actually probably run through to the PSV game which is the Dutch Cup um, and I'll run through the three Eredivisie games before that. I'm just trying to get through a bit of this, a little bit more of this season, and and um, yeah, get some progress going. So I think I'll do that. Um, and yeah, I'll jump back in probably once um, Dario has been signed. Hopefully, if that goes through, I'll show you guys that quickly, and then we'll just run through the PSV game. So I'm gonna pause the video again, and we'll be back soon, guys. Okay, so we're just about to sign Daryl Yanmat, which is brilliant. So I'm gonna accept that. And run through the next day until he jumps into the club. Cool. Alrighty, so there we go. So we have signed him, which is very, very good. I think it was a bargain price, really, for seven million. Like obviously he joined Barcelona for twenty-five point five, and actually Barcelona just bought um Damian from Man United, so actually paid a fair bit of I think it's about twenty million or something for him. Um yeah, so I think to get him for seven million, like current international, someone who's obviously such you know really good player. Um. Yeah, I, um, I'm quite happy to have him there. I think he's going to be our number one choice, now, our number one right back by a fair margin. Um, you're showing like sort of similar star potential there, but I think um, Yarmat's a fair bit, actually we saw in the, the stats and stuff, Yarmat's a fair bit better than Karsdorp at the moment. So yeah, he's going to be really, really good. Really happy to have him in the, in the club. I think it's going to be a big boost to us. Um, paying me a lot of money, like I mentioned, but I think it's fine. I think it's worth it. Our wage budget's nearly hit the million mark, which has jumped up a lot from where you know, the start of the game. But... Um, you know, I think that's what we've got to do. We've got to sort of spend the money. Like I mentioned, we've got a huge amount of money sitting there and um, transfer budget and all that kind of stuff there. So I'm not too worried about the financial situation, which is good. Um, so we had a 1-1 draw against Roy to JC. It wasn't all that great. Some of our guys were still a bit rusty from the, the winter break. Um, but yeah, that wasn't too bad. So hopefully we win our next two games and then we'll win the one against PSV, which should be good. So I'm going to pause the video again, guys. I think that probably I'll just run through the PSV game. I don't think I'll jump back in unless anything major happens. Um, I will actually mention that Silson actually, Porto actually made a, 
Um, ended up being a $17.5 million offer for Sillison, but I couldn't get them up to the $20 million um, release clause mark, and they sort of wouldn't wouldn't want to take that. Um, Sillison actually did ask to leave, but I sort of stuck to my guns. Now he's actually happy because they've actually, Porter's actually dropped their interest in him. Um, so if we jump back into our, this one. Um, yeah, so he, um, they've actually dropped his interest, so he's actually happy to stay now. So, um, which is good. So I'm glad I stuck to my guns. He's obviously the best keeper we've got. Probably the best one we could really afford as well, especially like a Dutch, you know, especially we're going for our Dutch slash Scandinavian rule. I don't think we'd probably get anyone better. So that is good. Anyway, guys, I'm going to pause the video again and we'll be back soon. Okay, Dutch Cup game day against PSV. So we should have a fairly... Um, rested squad. I sort of rotated our squad in the last game. Actually gave a couple of our really young players um, first team debuts. Ended up in a, 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 in a draw, but that's worth it, I think. So we got a full squad for this time around. So maybe might as well do a little bit of analysis here for PSV while we're at it. Um, cool. So actually look at the summary screen first quickly. So... Um, Philip is their number one goal scorer. So as we've seen before, he's a good header of the ball, decent um, finishing and stuff as well, really good off the ball, all that kind of stuff. So very, very good player there. I have to try and shut him down as much as we possibly can. Um, so probably potentially showing me onto his right foot if we need to, but I'll have a look at that a bit later. Um, Guardado has the most assists on the left, which is not surprising. A very good player again. So given that he's actually weak on the right foot, um, I'm actually half tempted to actually show him inwards, and then who are they going to play on the left? It's really hard to know, isn't it? On the right, I should say. If it's going to be Dara, um, we show him onto his yeah onto his left as well, so they're weak. So it would be sort of funneling them inwards, which does bring its own dangers. But I think it would probably be worth it actually, given that Dara's got really great crossing, and I think Guadada does as well, doesn't he? A decent crossing, fourteen. Yeah, so it would be dangerous showing them inwards, but um, it could be worth it as a little bit of a, a um, you know, a bit of a, a sort of a tactical thing to do. So it's actually really interesting. I'm not really quite sure why they end up selling Daron Zoet, because um, all they've got is Remco Pasvier, who obviously isn't really up to the quality. He's actually transfer listed, and that's all they've got in terms of their keepers. So um, they've got, obviously got Mickey van der Hart, who used to be at Ajax, but he's injured for a couple of weeks. So he's, I suppose he's going to be the number one goalkeeper, isn't he? Which I don't think he's really up to... I mean, obviously he's a decent goalkeeper, but he's not really like anywhere near like a Sillison level. So, interesting. Anyway, it's their choice. It's what they want to do. Stefano Denswil, obviously an ex Ajax player as well. Um, yeah, interesting. Laren Duarte was here as well, wasn't he? Was he in their B team, is he? I know, Laris Duarte, it's a different guy. Uh, interesting. Um, anyway, back to what we were doing. So, tactics. So, they always usually start with a 4 4 1 1. A um, couple of times with a 4 2 3 1. So, actually, that's what they started with last time. 4 2. Oh, it's a 4 2 1 3, really, isn't it? So, it looks like they do change around a little bit, which is interesting. So, I have to keep an eye on that. And actually, looks like they do sort of switch around formations a bit as well in games. Uh, which actually seems to work out quite well for me. They sort of score some goals from that. So, definitely keep an eye, that very close eye on that. And make sure they don't. Um, pull a fast one on us at some point to the game. We'll keep our eye on that. Um, what else are we going to look at? Goals. Some goals here. So most of their goals come through the middle. A few sort of out wide, I suppose. They're probably wingers and stuff cutting. Actually, a few, few here from the right. This sort of deep right position. So not quite sure who that'll be. We'll have a look at that a little bit later. Nothing major here. A few from sort of from the... I suppose it'd be the left um, side for us um, attacking them. So it's not too much though. Most of their assists from the left, so I'm assuming that's going to be, be um, Guardado and their left back. So I have to have a look at their left back, who's going to play there in a minute, see how he's been going. But if we can sort of shut down the left, we're probably going to do fairly well uh, to actually shut down most of their team. Don't Actually, not a lot of assists from in the box here, which is interesting. So yeah, could potentially maybe say that maybe they play quite deep when they, when they actually pack out the box, but not necessarily. That's probably not... Don't really have enough information to make that claim, so we'll just run with what we've got. Um, goal types, mostly play shots, a few headers and stuff. A lot of assists from crosses, actually, which is interesting. Not a whole lot from passing. So it sort of actually probably, probably indicates to me that actually probably, probably play quite wide. They don't maybe not necessarily play through the middle, though they do have a fair few through balls. Um, so I suppose maybe that could be, you know, that could, could be even potentially coming from runners in, you know, in from the you know, inside forwards, maybe running in and getting some through balls in. Could be coming through the middle. It's a little bit hard to tell based on what we've got at the moment, but... 
Yeah, interesting. So obviously a lot from crosses. So if we can actually, I think given that they do have so many from crosses, if we can actually sort of shut them down and bring both their inside forwards inwards, it's probably going to hopefully you know nullify a lot of their crossing stuff, and maybe we can actually pack out the midfield and actually you know shut them down a little bit more. Um, so I think that's pretty much all we're going to need to see there. I'm going to look at their players at the moment, see who's been playing at left back in terms of appearances. Um, yeah, it's got a couple of Guardado there, and then Jetro Williams. So Jetro Williams. 22 games, only one goal and two assists. Not a whole lot of assists down there, but obviously he's a quite a good, decent player. Not really anything, I don't think. I don't think it's worth showing him in. We'll may potentially, maybe um, man mark him with our... Uh, he'll be on the left, so it'd be um, shown, or whoever plays in the, the advanced playmaker on the right. We could potentially man mark them to try and try and shut them down, which I actually don't think is a bad idea because obviously the advanced playmaker sits back you know, it's sort of deeper anyway, so sort of having them join out of position isn't, you know, the worst thing in the world. So it may actually do that. It may show both their inside forwards or their, both their wide players um, inwards on their weaker feet. We'll man mark Jetro Williams with our advanced playmaker right to probably hopefully shut him down. And actually try and shut down that left flank and see if we can do some damage that way or, you know, get the advantage that way. Alrighty, so that's what we're going to do, guys. So we've got our team here. So we should have a fairly strong or rested team. So we've got Silison back. Silison was injured for a little bit. Got Jan, Matt, uh, Veltman. Hendricks is not because he's a little bit down. We'll put Sviachenko in there. In that position, Veltman's going to play, though. Um, Boilers on the left. And who else do we have? Christopher Ayer in the middle. Van der Beek and Klaassen. The many G's just back from injury, so he's not really quite up to scratch yet. Fisher on the left. So Eunice hasn't been playing all that well um, recently, so I'm going to go with Fisher. I'm not sure about El Ghazi or Shone. Um... Or even Sam Dion. Sam Dion's down a little bit on condition. It's probably not him. But, I don't know. Like, El Ghazi's not really a, a wide playmaker for me. And he's like his work rate and teamwork and stuff. Probably aren't. Given that we're going to be man marking, I think probably Shone's better because he's got... Although his work rate's not amazing. His teamwork's a little bit better, though. But he's like his... Sort of his playmaking ability is just a little bit better than um, El Ghazi. So, I think we're going to run rather dice with Shone on the right. And we'll... We can even switch out El Ghazi in there if we need to. But I think that's pretty much our strongest team that we can line up at the moment, which is good. So Milik, as you can see here, he was injured for a little bit, so he will, he's um, a little bit down conditioning, but that's fine, or match sharpness. So that's all good. Alrighty, so that's good. They're going to play with their 4 2 3 one. So obviously, as you can see, this formation here, they're sort of like this, um, you know, this little Chris mini Christmas tree thing in the middle here. This little tree, I guess. Um, you know, you've sort of got five players right through the middle. So that could potentially why they haven't conceded a whole lot of assists like through this sort of um, you know, penalty area because it, I imagine they're going to be quite really quite strong through the middle, um, which just yeah works for well for us because I think we're not I don't think we're really going to be outmatched even though we are sort of numerically I don't think we're really going to be well, I suppose we're not really are we it's still a three isn't it it's a three in the midfield it's just sort of a you know reversal of what we've got. Which is fine. Um, alrighty, so we've got Guadado on the right, Dura on the left, and Jetro Williams on the left um, as well. So that's fine. So Philip Jordovic, Jordovic um, is going on to his weaker foot, which I think was his right, wasn't it? We'll just double check that. Uh, yeah, onto his right foot. We'll put weaker there anyway. Um, Alright, so Guadado on the left. You can show him onto his right, and then Dura on the right. Show him onto his left. That's so going to feed both of them in through the middle. Um, Davy proper. Doing fairly well. Three goals, two assists in 15 games. Long shots aren't amazing. I'm not too worried about that. Um, long shots of 14 is not bad. Um, long shots 10. That's not really much, is it? So I'm just sort of looking at... Uh, they had some sort of goals from... From deep. None of these guys look really threatening from long shots. I'm not too worried about those. Alright, we're just going to leave that... Um, all right, Jetro Williams, we won't do anything here. I think that's fine. I think Davey Proper, given that he's a lot of the main man, I think we may actually sort of put him onto closing down always, just to try and reduce some of the space and stuff that he has. Um, try and shut them down. Because if we can shut down the wide player, shut down Davey Proper, that's going to be pretty much a lot of their attacking threat down. So if we can really staff them that way, that would be good. Alrighty, so we're going to go to the team talk and say, we'll go for revenge, we'll go for aggressive and say we owe them, and that seemed to work. Awesome, that worked well. Um, cool, so we're gonna jump into our tactics, and we're going to come into Lassa Shone here, and edit here, man mark Jetro Williams, and we'll see how that go. Alrighty guys, I'm gonna pause the video, and we'll be back at some stage with a progress update. 
Okay, a very, very pleasing 3-0 victory for us over PSV in the Dutch Cup. Well, it was really, really good. So, uh, a lot of our guys played really well. It had a brace by Milik and a late goal but from Sem De Jong, which was great. So, I think we actually managed to shut them down really, really well and actually forced a few substitutions from them and actually sort of really stifled a lot of their better players. So that was really pleasing. Um, yeah, I agree. We were, we did well. Good win, good win. Um, alrighty, so we are going to jump into the goals. I will show you guys these goals. This is the first one here. Um, 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 um. So we did sort of dominate. You can see the first goal didn't come to the, the 50th minute. So we did sort of dominate the first half. It didn't really get any rewards. And I didn't really want to make any changes because I thought we were doing well. So really good ball from or vision from Shiny there. And just Millie just peels off there and taps it in, which was really, really good. So quite a good team goal. So I'm actually noticing now that we've changed our mentality up to standard. I think it actually is working out really quite well. I think it's just the speed of our attacks is just a little bit, a little better. Um, I think we're on counter four. This was a brilliant ball by Fisher. Oh, look at that. Um, by Millie. I'm just going to drag that back a little bit, guys. Just love that. that was, this was of a counter. We don't score many goals on the counter because it's not really how we're set up to play. Um, if I can just grab forward a little bit. There we go. You can see here, so this is obviously from a counter. So we've just won the ball back. And you see they're sort of all over the place. This is their two and three. This is their centre backs. Um, you can see. There, Dara and Arias, which is there, sort of all over the show. So, 21, where's 21? Um, can't even see. Tw oh, that must have been, I think, I think Arias was their right back. So, Dara was on their, their right attacking midfield, and I think Arias was their right back. I think he got changed later on. So, this little formation thing's wrong. Um, yeah, so he's their right back. And look, you actually see that he was making a run um, forward. And they've actually been massively caught out of position now, as you can see. They're really all over the show. This is the advantage of having players that sort of, you know, players that actually, um, like inside forwards, actually sort of play like really high at the pitch. It does sort of open up these opportunities, like when you get um, chances like this. You, know, you see here, and then Milik um, does really well, holds on the ball just for a little bit, just long enough to actually draw the number two, their centre back, towards him. Which I think was a mistake. He probably should have been better off backing off and giving Milik a little bit more space and giving some of these players time to come back. But obviously that's the way things go. Players make mistakes. And then Fisher, though, even though he's a little bit injured, had picked up a bit of a knock. It was like a facial injury, though, so it shouldn't affect his speed. Um, yeah, and the brilliant ball by Milik to actually release Fisher. And Fisher does um, really well here. So you actually see they actually recover back really well and they actually get both their players back in. But Fisher comes in, and that's there. You go. That was the advantage. That's the problem with having a not great goalkeeper. Is he couldn't actually. He should probably should have you know held that. But because he's not you know not really a great goalkeeper, um, Van Osh, he then he actually sort of palmed it away, and that gave Milik the opportunity to to tuck that away. So that was good. Um, last goal was from a free kick. We don't score a whole lot from free kicks either. But we'll just run through this one. So Ogazi sends it in, and then Diong, Sam Diong, um, tucks it away. So we see here, it just peels off, and then tucks it away in the bottom left-hand corner, which was brilliant. So, um, yes, yeah, so that was really, really good. So that was quite pleasing. So I think we're going to run through a little bit of analysis here, just to show you guys. Seeing that we did, uh, um, you know, went through a bit of a, a pre-game um, analysis, I'm going to show you guys some stuff here, see how things worked out. Um, you can see how like our heat map was fairly well spread. We sort of had a bit of domination through the middle, a bit of some spikes there. I'm not too worried about any of those though. Um, yeah, and as you see, even though Lasse Shoney was actually man marking their left back, he wasn't massively out of position. Like he always plays sort of a bit deeper anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. And you see, that Christopher A was our um, our main man, and then John House said that's um, so John Howden Sater and Sam De Jong and El Ghazi were our three subs. So sort of ignore those; they come on a little bit late. But um, yeah, apart from that, it was quite good. And then PSV, you actually say, didn't play really deep, like not massively deep, probably about the same as what we played. Um, but yeah, they sort of did play quite narrow, um, which sort of did, did give us a lot of joy down the down both flanks, which was fine. And um, yeah, so that was really, really good. And I think uh, Guardado was actually substituted like fairly early on. Uh, I'm not sure um, whether Dara was. If we jump in here... Yeah, so Guardado was substituted fairly on, fairly early on because he wasn't playing very well. Um, Dura didn't have much of a game, and Jetro Williams had quite a low rating game as well. So I think, you know, sort of those changes that we made did sort of stifle them a bit, and they didn't react very well. So they didn't actually change formation, which I expected them to, to actually do that at some point through the game. Um, but they didn't end up doing that, so that was fine. Look at some mistakes here. Nothing major, just a missed interception from Christopher A. I'm not going to worry too much about that because it didn't lead to anything anyway. Look at some movement here. 
Not a whole lot really, which is interesting. We didn't play massively quick players. Like Fisher and Shiny aren't particularly quick. Like El Ghazi is a little bit quicker, and even like Milik's not massively quick either, uh, which is fine. So look at some scoring chances here. Had three scoring chances, which was our three goals. So it was good that we tucked all those away. Um, interceptions seen fairly decent spread which is nice a lot of like in good inceptions in there which is good and he had one missed one there so that's quite pleasing as well we actually see we did make a fair few interceptions like in our penalty box but we didn't really miss any apart from that one there so that's fine which was pleasing to see look at some fouls here so obviously we didn't commit many fouls but we were fouled quite a bit so that was again quite pleasing um no one player in particular young matt had a bunch of fouls down the right there and then, um, who's that there? That's Boylison as well. So they sort of generally happen when players, well, like the right backs and stuff, actually get away from um, away from their markers and it sort of forces RAS challenges from their, from their opposition. So it does give you the, um, I think this one here, this number two was, yes, yeah, the 87. That was actually the one that actually led to the goal from Sim De Jong. So as you see there, the benefit of actually getting like fouls and stuff there. And actually Boylison had three as well. So there's one there, and then two up here. And it actually shows you, like I mentioned, Shows you they're sort of getting away. They're actually causing problems because getting fouled in this area generally isn't isn't you know isn't ideal. So if that's sort of happening, you're sort of you know showing that you're actually putting them under pressure, and making them into forcing them into bad mistakes. So that's another good one you can look at. Um, some tackles here. It's actually quite pleasing. We didn't need to make any tackles in our penalty area, which is good. It shows they didn't get a whole lot of space or penetration into our box, um, which was good. And we sort of you know managed to sort of get the tackles out in this sort of you know outside our area, which was really good. Sort of the area that we want to be defending in. Which was awesome. Um, aerial challenges. Won a bunch of you know those in our penalty box again. Lost a few here and there, but not too worried about most of those. Look, some crossing here. Had a few completed crosses. Most of our missed ones were from corners. A couple from Jan Matt on the right missed. We're not too worried about any of those though. Um, passing again. It's actually fairly well spread. Obviously, it's always going to be a little bit more biased towards the right, just because the way that's our formation is set up. But and you see like a lot of um, actually really good balls, actually sort of long balls coming in here. You see those sort of like long arrows coming in here, which shows, shows that we're actually getting like a lot more, um, we're getting sort of a lot of space. I'm assuming there's probably going to be um, Boylison. Yeah, so most of these are Boylison actually see 17, which is Boylison. So you showed that he was actually getting through, getting a lot of space, and then actually finding, and he was actually you know, getting these some long balls actually through here, which is, this is sort of the balls that you want, because this sort of, you know, causes some problems, because it means that he's probably had quite a bit of space. And that forces them to adjust and to change and all that kind of stuff, which was quite pleasing. So that was good. So some key passes here. Daryl Yama had a bunch um, on the right there, which is awesome. Um, Christopher Ayer, th some through the middle as well. And Donny Van der Beek. So a lot of our players did quite well there, which is good. Um, some shots. So we're not getting... Like, we're probably the only concern I've got at the moment is that we're not really getting um, shots on target. Compare, like enough shots on target to compared to how many shots we're actually making overall. Um, so that that sort of can be an indication that your um, you, the quality of the chances you're making creating aren't actually as good as what they should be, which can be a sign that maybe something tactically isn't right. So I think, for example, like we saw before, we had 14 shots but only five on target. So generally, you want at least 50% of your shots on target. So I mean, we're only two away. Um, we did have some block shots and stuff as well, so yeah, and only one like one long shot is good. Like I'm, I don't want I don't like long shots. I hate them. Um, but yeah, so that that's good. But I mean, I think I would like to probably maybe create a little bit better chances. So we're gonna keep tweaking here and there, see how you know things keep going. You know, look still look at making some changes and things like that. So that's good. Um, so as you see here as well, guys, like I've actually kept been keeping an eye on this. So bumping our, our mentality of our tactic up to standard from counter it hasn't really affected our possession levels you can see here like 60 percent possession still huge has lowered our pass completion a little bit but not really a whole lot but i um, think it's definitely worth it for the quality of chances or your quality of play that we're creating like i mentioned we're just a little bit quicker just our play is a little bit quicker a little bit sharp and we're not so ponderous in possession and i think before the problem was that we weren't sort of we were too slow like we were just letting them and we were too slow in our possession and that and that actually let the opposition team um, actually get back and defend. And we weren't we weren't moving them around quick enough. So they always, anytime we switch play, they always had enough time to actually get back and defend and actually change and switch around and actually move their their defensive line and their defensive formation around. And we weren't we weren't quite quick enough. So I think bumping up to standard just means we're a little bit quicker. And like you actually see, well, that, that counter the second goal, um, the Milik goal, the um, the second one that Fisher created on the counter, it just shows that we're just a little bit quicker in our, in our, in our passing and our movement and stuff, 
and I think it's just creating um, a little bit better attacking play, so that's quite pleasing. Um, yeah, so that's good. So we are, actually, I'm just going to, last thing I'm going to actually have a look is look at the players for PSV. So look at Jetro Williams here. Um, can we actually see like his full stats from his last game? I think we can. It's probably easiest going here. I think we're going to stats, um, form, if it loads, form. There we go. All right, so here we go. So we can see he actually had a, uh, that's wrong. Where are we? It's not showing up there. No, it mustn't be loaded yet. Alrighty, maybe it's loaded now. We'll see if it's in. So if we're coming to players, Jetro Williams, stats, uh, no form. There we go, right, this is what I wanted. So you can see here at a 6.2 rating game. Um, and you can see he actually had no completed passes, which for someone who, like they had, that, like we said, they had most of their, their shots, most of their assists down their left-hand flank, he would have been obviously would be quite integral to that. So for him to have no key passes, no key passes, no key tackles, no key headers, um, no shots, no, obviously no assists, um, only a couple of dribbles. And yeah, only they had, like, like pass completion wasn't amazing either. It's not bad, but it's not amazing. So you actually see there that we pretty much stifled his play a lot, which is why he ended up with a 6.2 rating. So if we come into Guardado, wherever he is, there he is, into his form, and oh, we don't have, uh, currently unavailable, damn. So, but what about Dara? Can we see his? Um, no, we can't. Oh, anyway. yeah. Um, yeah, so like I mentioned, Guardado was substituted early on, or fairly early, which obviously is a sign generally that... You've um you sort of upset the play, play you know the way of playing and they're not you know they're not the manager's not that happy with them um so that was good so uh, yeah Fisher's injured for a few days I'm not too worried about that though got 429k for winning which is awesome Darian Matt um, played really well so even though he didn't have a sister or a goal he did really well 100% of his tackles completed which is brilliant for a fullback and nine rating there so already Jan Matt is being a has been a really good signing so really happy to have him. Um, what else was news? I don't think a whole lot. So you actually see, I think what I'll do now, guys, I think I'll probably run, so it's 25 minutes. I think what I'll do, I'll probably pause the video in a, in a tick and we'll, I'll run through the Camber and, Ex Camber and Excelsior games off camera and then we'll actually run in and we'll actually um, play the Man City home game in the Champions League in this episode. So it may end up being a 40 minute episode, but I think it'd be worth it getting through that, which would be good. Which will be good. Um, something did happen sort of in a, sort of a Holland's, um, space, I guess. Riedewald actually got a transfer, a 15 million transfer to Chelsea, which I was a little bit surprised about. So he did play 20 games in his first season with Arsenal, but this time around he sort of only played nine games and didn't play. For some reason, he didn't play as many games. I think he sort of performed well, but you know, he didn't get as many games. Uh, yeah, so he's gone to Arsenal, uh, gone to Chelsea in a 15.5 million move. We actually ended up, I think we're going to get a few million from him. Uh, for the transfer, because we had 25% um, sell-on uh, clause in his in his contract, or his transfer to Arsenal, which was quite good. Um, you actually see, though, he only went there for 15.5, and he's already valued at 24.5, so, um, yeah, obviously I think it's pretty pretty good um, pretty good uh, signing for Chelsea. So it was interesting, he actually sort of is starting to play at um, central defender as well, which, is like I've mentioned before, I think it's his best position, but at Arsenal he was playing as a left-back. So it will be interesting to see what um, Chelsea actually use him as. Actually jump into their players, I'm not sure if we can see here. Um, no, I can't see. can't see where he's been playing. Can we see in his form? Um, so it looks like these are probably the two. Oh, these are injured. Oh, okay. So it looks like he's been playing at left back. Must be for Chelsea, yeah. So he's been playing at left back again. So interesting. Anyway, alright, guys. I'm we'll gonna pause the video and we'll be back for the home game against Man City in the Champions League, which is massive, massive, massive game. If we can pick up a result there, like a win, if we get a win there, that would be enormous. Um, if we forget maybe a draw, no, a draw wouldn't be good because then they'll probably have the um, the way goal advantage. So anyway, alright, guys. We'll be back shortly. Okay, just thought I'd fill you in on a couple of things before we get into the Man City game. Still a couple of uh, few weeks away, or week, week or so away. Um, we've got the Dutch Cup semi-final draw. So Feyenoord actually are out. I think Sparta beat them um, in a bit of a shock. So think cross fingers. I don't want to jinx myself because obviously Ajax and the Dutch Cup just don't really work. But I think we've got a fairly decent chance of doing quite well now. So anyway, we're going to see who we've got. So if we get Sparta, that'd be brilliant. Oh, we don't. Anyway, so we get AZ. So that's fine. Um, AZ doing, yeah, middle table in the Eredivisie, so they're not doing amazingly well, so we should hopefully have a fairly good chance of going through and they play 
um, Edio Den Haag or Sparta. So you would think it would be probably Edio Den Haag, but who knows. So that's good. So, um, yeah, so transfer windows open. We had a ridiculous amount of offers for our players, especially Milik. Um, and he sort of did come in and say he wanted to join Leverkusen, but, um, and I said I would let him go for if a better offer came in, but they actually never made another offer, so he's happy. Um, and who else? We had bids for a bunch of our players, but I rejected them all. Um, big one was for actually Christopher Ayer, so I actually made, um, end up being a, was an overall transfer of 17.75. Um, which obviously is a fair bit of money, but obviously I don't want to sell him because he's one of our gun players. Um, and yeah, so he's still going to actually get a bit better. So he's going to be an absolute legend once he develops a little bit further. Um, yeah, so he actually, he did what, like he says here, he actually did, did want to discuss personal matters. I said that he actually wants to win the Champions League and I said, well, if you stick around, I guarantee that we'll be in the latter stages of it um, within the next two seasons. So... That's, you know, sort of fits well with us anyway. So there's a little bit more pressure on to actually do a little bit better, hopefully, this season. If we can get past into, maybe into the quarters or something, would be brilliant. Um, yeah, and maybe that would keep him happy. I'm not quite sure. But anyway, we'll see how that goes. Hopefully, we can keep him around for a little while. Um, 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 yeah, so that's good. Um, all right, guys, I'm going to pause the video again, and we'll be back for the Man City game quite soon. Okay, it is game day at or with Man City in the Champions League. So, first thing we're going to look at is injured players. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot for us. Um, there's only company, which is only slightly injured. Um, probably won't play, though, which is really good. The only good news that we've really got. Um, all their players like Ronaldo and all that kind of stuff are still... Aguero and De Bruyne and all that kind of stuff, they're all still ready and ready to go. So, you should see Cristiano Ronaldo is having an awesome return to English football. 14 goals, 7 assists in 29 appearances. So, he is doing brilliantly, of course. Um, I still can't believe they bought him for 20 million. That is ridiculous. Anyway, um, okay, so what are we going to look at? Um, we had a couple of decent wins in the Eredivisie, which was good. So a 2-1 against Camber and a 1-0 against Excelsior. So we're sitting on top of the table by, uh, what, nine points now, which is good. Um, 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 um so not nine points, seven points. Seven? Yeah, seven points. Oh, God, I can't count. Um, right, so that's good. Yeah, so we've got a bit of a buffer in the Eredivisie, which is awesome. So we're going to do an analysis um, on Man City and see what on earth we could possibly do. So uh, it's probably we probably know the main stuff here is Aguero and Ronaldo, obviously their biggest threats. Um, Kevin De Bruyne's a lot of assists, and yeah, we sort of we sort of know a lot about Man City. I'm not too sort of interested in that kind of stuff. Not really interested in all this kind of stuff as well. As you see, their players are better than ours, which is not surprising. What I am interested in stuff like this is their tactics. So they start with a 4-2-3-1 always. Sometimes they switch to a 4-1-4-1 or a 4-4-2, so that's something we have to be aware of. It looks like they switch to a 4-1-4-1 a fair bit, and actually it looks like it does work for them quite a bit. So those 26 goals scored there. So we will have to um, have to keep an eye on that. So what else are we going to look at? Um, goals. So you see you've got a fairly decent spread of goals here. So... Obviously, Ronaldo's playing off the right, so I would suspect that's probably the numbers we're seeing there on the the eight um, on that sort of you know, inside left position in the penalty area, and some they get some from deep as well. So as you see here, they're fairly sort of consistent all over the park. Is that they sort of pose a goal threat from most areas. This is really interesting here. This four, um, this suggests to me that potentially, and also the fact they've got this sort of these ones down this like this side here as well, potentially suggests that they're a little bit open down their left. Which, given Ronaldo's um, penchant for not doing any defensive work, isn't totally surprising. So, who do they actually play in the left back? So, obviously, you won Bernat. Bernat? Bernat? Um, he's probably their best left back, which is probably a good piece of news that he's injured for three to four months. So, that's probably good news for us. So, who have they been playing at left back? Um, Andrew Robertson, who's obviously not really up to scratch of everybody else. Uh, they bought him from Hull for 15 million. Interesting. Not a bad player. Interesting. All right, yeah, so potentially we could actually look at maybe exploiting the left flank um, down Ronaldo's side. We're obviously going to play our counter-attacking tactic, but if we can maybe exploit um, the flank or maybe even clear the ball to the flanks and try and get the ball out there quickly, uh, probably to play Eunice if I think he's probably going to be fit, because um, he's our quickest guy, and maybe try and get some, um, some, you know, exploit the left flank a little bit, or their left flank, I think. Well, it's just going to be our right, isn't it? Their left, our right, of course, yeah. So it's their left, our right. So 
thinking maybe Sam De Jong out on the right then, because Lesser Shane is obviously not quick. Um, Sam, De Jong's, Sam De Jong's not particularly quick either, El Ghazi's quicker, but thinking maybe Sam De Jong's a little bit better, he's a little bit better, sort of obviously the mental side of things, a little bit more composed and makes better decisions and off the ball and that kind of stuff, so maybe look exploiting their right flank. All right, we'll keep an eye on that. Good to know. Um, assists, yeah, a lot from both sides, not a whole lot through the middle, so that's not overly surprising. So we could potentially show them inwards. Um, I'm a little, little bit reluctant to do that given the quality, but maybe we haven't really got anything to lose. Fair bit from deep as well, so potentially that sort of indicates that maybe they not afraid to sort of yeah, get some balls forward if they need to. Um, obviously you can see probably more from wide, a little bit more from the left as well, which is probably backs up what we said. Not a whole lot though, but a little bit. So potentially we could, like we said, exploit their left flank, see if we can do some damage down that side. Um, so the goal assists, or goal types we'll look at first, um, placed shots mainly, and yeah, interesting, so obviously they're not much of a heading team, all that kind of stuff, so placed shots is their thing, which is fine, that's a good thing to know, don't have to worry about a heading. Um, pass, cross, through balls, long balls, yeah, so a bit of a mix, actually, a few long balls as well, you don't really see a whole lot of long balls like that, so it's probably in this number here, or some of the, half the number there anyway. Um, Alright, so I think, yeah, I think overthink sort of points obviously playing our counter-attacking tactic, which we would have done anyway, but definitely sort of doing that given they do play some long balls, we don't give them any space in behind us. Um, and, uh, yeah, maybe exploit their left flank, so maybe we'll focus play down our right, which is interesting. That's pretty much all I need to see there, I think. Uh, we know a fair bit about Man City anyway, so that's fine. Alrighty, so, jumping the team. So, as we can see here, Jan Matt is ineligible because he was cup-tied by Barcelona, which is fine. Um, unfortunately, this is the, probably the big blow. Sillison fractured his wrist. He's going to be out for four to five weeks. So he's going to miss probably this leg, probably the next leg, and probably the Dutch Cup semi-final. So what I'm actually going to do, rather than playing Lewenberg in there, because he's oh, he's okay, but he's not really up to scratch. What I think, think I'm going to do, I'm going to bring in um, Stan Van Bladeren. No, not you. Who are we looking for? I'm looking for someone else. Is he under 19? So we didn't send him out alone, did we? I hope we didn't. Oh, is it Jeffrey DeLang? No. Oh, here he is, Julian Feylund. Damn, I was going to bring him in. We just sent him out on loan, didn't we? Um, I haven't got enough time to bring him back either, because it's game day. Um, all right, that's my mistake, my big mistake. Um, all right, so he's better than Lundberg, but obviously he's out on loan, so we'll bring him back, I think. Who's he playing with, Toulouse? Hmm. I don't know, guys. Anyway, all right, we're just going to have to run with Stan van der Bladeren and Lundberg as our goalies. Um, that was my mistake, like I mentioned, but life goes on. So, um, yeah, Stan van der Bladeren's going to be number one sub. is going to start. So, Karsdorp's going to be our right back, given that um, Jan Matt's cup tied. I think um, probably Boylison on the left. No, not Boylison, because he's just getting back from injury. He's still injured, I should say. That's a bad choice. Um, Christopher Ayer in the middle, yes. Um, Veltman and Sviachenko is injured, so he's not. So Veltman and Hendricks going to be our two centre-backs. Christopher Ayer in the middle, Jensen's out. Um, Nemanja G's out, so Klaassen. Klaassen's our attacking mid, and Donny van der Beek is our box-to-box. -box. Eunice, uh, no, we'll, put in, we'll start Fisher. A little bit better conditioning, um, and we're going to put, I think we're going to start De Jong on the right. Even though he's a little bit down in conditioning, we've got El Ghazi and Shona if we need to. Milik up front, I think that's fairly good. So some of our some of our guys are a little bit down in conditioning, but that's fine. I'm not too bothered by most of that. We are going to bring in Jensen as another sub. There we go. Yep, yeah, cool. Right, so that's gonna be our team. Um, oh no, it's not. Where we go? That's better. Um, so we're gonna play the right formation and Fishers on the left. Christopher Ayer, De Jong. Klaassen, Van Beek, and yeah, that's all good. Cool. There we go. That's better. So, so, yes, Man City, obviously, favourites, which is fine. So, I don't know, so many damn good players. I think we're going to exploit the left flank. I don't think we're going to do anything fancy like, you know, bringing these guys inwards. I think it's probably asking for a little bit of trouble given they're so good coming in anyway, um, De Bruyne and Ronaldo. I think we're probably better off just trying to play our game, not not overcomplicate things, try and stick with our guns, see what we can do, try and exploit the left flank a little bit, or their left, our right, uh, a little bit if we can do that. 
So I'm going to not do any team talks there. Or any opposition instructions. We're going to say pick up where you left off. Jeez, fine. And we'll say we believe in you. Cool. Alrighty. So tactics, tactics, tactics. So we're going to exploit. It's their left, our right. So we're going to exploit our right flank. See if we can do some damage there. I'm almost tempted to actually clear the ball. Where is that? Um, clear the ball to the flanks. Hmm. We might try that. We might try that. Give me probably me so under the pump so much. We don't want to make any silly decisions. So we may do that. See how things go. Alright, guys. I'm gonna pause the video and we'll be back. Um. Uh, yeah. Some stage and see how th everything has gone. Okay, guys. Two one at half time. So yeah, the two early goals from Man City. We claw one back through Fisher a little bit later on. Um. um, 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 um so I'm say actually expect better. A few bad guys are a bit nervous, obviously, with the, the occasion. So I'm going to say go with the belief one. I'm not sure if it's going to work. We could go with pressures off, but I think this is probably better. Cool. Alrighty, so, um, yeah, so... Two-one wouldn't be the worst, I guess. Obviously, they've got the two away goals, so we'd have to win the next leg 1-0, wouldn't we? to make it a draw. Um, yeah, so it makes it hard. So, we, I mean, it is hard because they're such a different class than us and they're just really sort of running us ragged a little bit. So what we're going to do, a little bit of analysis quickly. So take all this rubbish off. There we go. So we're going to look at our with the ball. So I think our formation, like you see here, it's fairly like, actually quite decent, like in terms of, obviously a lot of, you know, um, heat spot, heat, what if you want to call it through there? Um, because we're getting a lot of, you know, pin back to our box a lot more. But I think sort of our formation wise, we're doing okay. I think Man City, yes, yeah, so they're playing quite narrow through the middle. So, I mean, we are playing narrow, a bit narrow anyway, aren't we? So I'm thinking maybe if we could play narrow ourselves, a little bit more narrow. Hmm. Um, all right, so that's not really that give us a whole lot of there. So what about Man City? Where are they getting all their passing from? Where are they going with their passing? So nothing really. Probably a little bit more down their right. Which is interesting, given the left is um, Ronaldo's side. But he's actually he did score a goal. I think it was Ronaldo and Aguero scored goals. So that's fine. So what about our passing? Yeah, it's a little bit all over the show with our passing, because because we're getting like some long balls and stuff forward. And you see a lot of, a lot of big long balls getting intercepted. They're not too bothered by most of that, I don't think. I think generally when we do get the ball, it works out fairly well. Um, I'm actually going to take off though that I sort of I'm going to actually take off the clear the ball to the flanks. I'm still going to exploit the right flank. I'm actually going to just take off um, yeah the clear the ball to the um, to the flanks. I think maybe it, I don't think it was really giving us a whole lot of benefit. So we're going to do that. Um, so what about Man City? Are they crossing a lot? Not a whole lot of crossing, so obviously that shows they're coming in sort of, you know, with passing rather than anything else, which is fine. So anyone making mistakes for them that we could exploit? Not really. A few missed interceptions in their penalty area, which is interesting, because they have a letter. And company. What about us? What about us with our defensive stuff? Yeah, so we're actually about a bunch of missed interceptions in the middle as well. So it's unfortunate movement. So is anyone causing us problems with their movement in particular? Uh, Sterling's got a few there, but no one really sort of standing out. Probably Aguero Sterling the most. There's not really a whole lot of anything we can do about that though. Are we getting any benefit? Not really. Oops. Not really, no. Uh, okay, so what else can we look at? So make any mistakes in terms of tackling? Lost. We lost a few here and there. And you see, we are sort of pinned back right now, penalty error, which is to be expected. I think we did anything else. Like, I'm, I was half tempted. To almost actually go out and try and um, just maybe play our natural game, but I think it's maybe just a little bit too open, and their quality. Like we we sort of found last season. Like even even though we're a better team this season, I think we sort of found last season that uh, if we sort of go out and do that, we just yeah, just the quality of the of the team that we're coming up against just means that we can get a little bit slaughtered sometimes with some massive big losses. Um, so what I think I'll do, guys. I think I don't think there's anything major I've really noticed. I don't think there's particularly anything we can do. I mean, we could come jump in here and maybe put a bunch of these on, like, oh, I'm not really sure they're going to make a whole lot of benefit. Maybe it will. Maybe we'll just try it. I'm just thinking, because we've got two, they've got two away goals already, so we're sort of really behind the eight ball anyway. 
So we really probably need to claw it back to 2-2. Two, two. Um, and then we've still got to win the second leg 1-0. So... Because anything else is going to be a loss for us on the away goals rule. So, yeah, we've really got to sort of claw it back to 2-2. Two, two. And then win the second leg. So we're sort of really behind the eight ball anyway. So I'm thinking maybe if we jump into this, we've sort of changed a few of our things, um, our tactical stuff. I don't think there's probably anything any, anything wrong with that. And if we sort of get to maybe around the 70, 75 minute mark, I'll actually switch over to our um, our sort of our normal tactic, which is a little bit more attacking. See if maybe we can do that. Maybe we could claw a goal back that way. Anyway, guys, I'm going to pause the video again and we'll be back at full time with a result. Okay, 3-1 loss. Very, very disappointing. Um, Kevin De Bruyne scored a second half goal. And, uh, yeah, so that was disappointing. So we're really sort of out of the tie. Um, it's going to take an absolute mammoth effort to get anything in the second leg. You see, Man City just absolutely battered us. Um, we were sort of doing well in the, the first half of the second half. Um, we sort of really shut them down a little bit more and some of the changes that we made in the in the halftime break seemed to work quite well but then once Kevin De Bruyne um, scored that goal I sort of switched over to our attacking formation because we had nothing really else to lose and uh, yeah we didn't unfortunately couldn't get anything out of the game um, yeah so disappointing so unfortunately looks like our Champions League, Champions League um, journey may be short lived again but it's not over there's still a second leg I mean we could still win oh god it have to be 3-0, wouldn't it? Wow, that's a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay, so it's pretty much over. But anyway, that's life. Um, we will do our best in the second league, and you never know what happens. I mean, obviously, you got players like Ronaldo in there. Obviously, just, you know, compared to our players, they're just, yeah, just on a whole different world in terms of ability and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I think I'm going to end the episode here, guys. Um, I obviously ran for probably quite long enough. So what have we got coming up? We've got a couple of Eredivisie games. We've got the Dutch Cup semi-final against AZ. Um, we've got another one against Edio Den Haag and the away game against Man City in 22 days. So a little bit of, of um, time away, but not too far, really. So, yeah. So I think we're doing fair. I think we've done fair. Like, I think this season's been pretty good um, in overall. I don't think we can really complain too much. We did well to get out of the group stage. We played really well in that in that uh, in the Champions League group stages, which was awesome. Um, doing well in the Eredivisie, we're doing well in the Dutch Cup so far. So I think, yeah, really we can't probably complain about this season. It's probably just quite disappointing you lose 3-1 though. I think 2-1 would have been manageable, because, you know, it could have been 2-0. Like, you know, 2-0 if we sort of played well and we could snatch a victory 2-0, but 3-1 makes it really hard. Three away goals is brutal. Um, anyway, that's fine. Alrighty guys, I'm in the episode here. Hope you've all had a wonderful day. Um, as always, it'd be amazing if you could subscribe to the channel and like the video. That would be enormously, enormously appreciated. All right, everyone, I'll see you all for the next episode.